You are listening to TF Talk News, part of the TF Talk network of podcasts and live streams, where we give you the most relevant current stories in your fandom and more, all within 30 quick minutes or less. I'm your host, Mr. Starscream, and I'll be your guide to everything worth talking about that transformed since last episode. It's your home, buddy, Starscream. I am the new leader of the Decepticons. From now on, you will take orders from me. <laughs> Discover more of our great shows at tftalk.net and follow us on social media channels at tfylp. At last, this is the week of Transformers news. The show was made for. After weeks of scavenging for Transformers news scraps, we may finally risk breaking our self-imposed 30-minute time limit in order to keep you on the bleeding edge of Transformer land. It's a big risk, but I, your guide and supreme chancellor of the monologue, Mr. Starscream, am willing to take it. There's been so many new figures discovered in the past 72 hours that we are going to bust up the usual format and take a trip to Reveal City, where it's a 24-hour smorgasbord of brand new toys to feast on. So get comfortable, grab a beverage of your choice, and buckle up, Buttercup, because this is going to be the longest episode of TF Talk News to date. Hit it, Kremzeeks. Welcome. You are now entering the Reveal Zone. Three, two, one, ignition. Let's start this party off with a bang by discussing something I actually did not expect to become a reality. The next Japanese-fronted Generation Selects release will indeed be the Beast War second redeco of the Combiner Wars mold Seacons. This set will stay true to their origins as a team of five Combiner figures versus the six of the G1 Seacons. The god Neptune figures will be sold in a gift set form, missing the lobster figure that is not included. If you're not a Japanese Beast Wars aficionado, here's a little history lesson. The Generation 1 Seacons were redecoed and given all new names and personalities for the Beast Wars second toy line and anime in the late 90s. Scalor became Coelagon, Overbite became Sea Phantom, Sea Wing turned into Terror Mander, Torso Snaptrap was reimagined as Half Shell, and most notably, Tentacle was gender swapped and given a massive character upgrade into the flighty Skilla. It appears that Takara Tomy's designers latched onto this eight tentacled character and gave it some extra tender love and care. Skilla sports quite a few new robot parts to make this fan favorite character even more femi than it appears as Tentacle. Very cool! For the most part, the God Neptune characters are faithfully reproduced in a base of white plastic with metallic gold, silver, and copper highlights. Their signature teal green is also added into the color palette for good measure. You will unfortunately not find a sixth Lobster Nautilator toy member to add to this team because he never existed in the first place. It remains to be seen if Takara Tomy will develop a new persona and release this figure in the future as some sort of special add-on exclusive, but I wouldn't hold my breath just yet on that. Even with these premium paint decos and remolded parts, the gift set was listed for a reasonable 22,000 yen, which currently converts to $205 USD. This is actually right in line with the costs of the previously released generation Seacons, but stop the press! This Friday, immediately after the reveal of God Neptune on Takara Tomy Mall, a listing for this figure burst from beneath the waves and made landfall on Hasbro Pulse for $186. System, and I'm talking up! It's great to see Hasbro and Takara Tomy have finally gotten more in sync as far as releasing the Japan fronted generation selects, and it's rather shocking to see the set for less than its Japanese counterpart here on Hasbro Pulse. You have a whole month to pick this sea dog up, with the pre-order window closing on June 15th, so don't dilly-dally, or things might escalate quickly after God Neptune returns to the cold black waves of the sea. You jumped up a notch. It did, didn't it? Yeah, I stabbed a man in the heart, and I killed a guy with a trident. Brick, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. Lay low for a while, because you're probably wanted wanted for murder. murder. Let's keep our feet firmly planted in the land of the rising sun for a while and talk about another Takara Tomy Mall exclusive, my favorite hater gator, ERE-X07 Deluxe Alicon. 
Diligent listeners to TF Talk News may recall me gushing over the wild pink deco we were shown at this toy's announcement. All of the other exclusive Quintessons appeared to sport the same decos we saw in digital renders at Hasbro Toy Fair in February, but Old Wide Mouth looked to differ quite a bit. Via the Takara Tomy Transformers Twitter account, which is at TF underscore PR, they provided side-by-side photos of the original pink Alicon next to what is apparently the final version from the factory. The lavender parts have been recast in dark gray, and some paint apps are added to the snout to produce a more anime-accurate deco. It remains to be seen if this deco is still going to differ from the Hasbro mainline release, but there are color differences when compared to the Hasbro renders. We'll just have to wait and see if the Japanese version is indeed a special release or not. For those completionists out there, all I can say is you should have listened to your pal, Mr. Starscream, for now you shall have to pay the price of not heeding my warnings. Tisk, tisk, tisk. You are either lying or you're stupid. I'm stupid, I'm stupid. Regardless of Deco, we'll find out for sure when the Takara Tomy Mall Quintesson exclusives are scheduled to ship within Japan this August. More information and photography was revealed for some higher-end masterpiece toys this week as well. Pre-orders for MP51RC are now readily available from US and overseas sources, and the final official product images were included. We now have a good look at RC from ahem, various angles, and her accessories are confirmed to include three unique blaster weapons, a hip holster to store one, three yellow blast effects, an extending tire weapon for car mode, and three unique faces sporting very subtly different expressions. RC's head also appears to have a clear red visor that flips down, correlating to a vital moment in the Transformers animated film where she debuted. Some glaring omissions include a human Daniel figure, with or without exosuit, any acknowledgement of her as a headmaster, or her IDW-inspired rage swords. Perhaps we can look forward to some of these additions in a future redeco of some kind, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Backpacks and chest proportions aside, it's the opinion of this host that this figure is wildly awesome. The car mode is as sleek and accurate as a crusty trans fan could hope for. The colors are lush and match the on-screen look wonderfully. Some of the poses shown in the product listings highlight the versatility and articulation of this unique robot design. At around $150, the price point seems in line with current Masterpiece price points. Pre-order window on Pulse for RC is not quite as forgiving as God Neptune, with only about 10 more days to make your initial fight or flight decision. MP51 seems to have divided the fandom along a variety of lines in the sand, but once in hand, I believe Masterpiece RC is going to be a must-have for G1 Masterpiece collectors, regardless of the variety of third-party options that have come before it. With a significant fresh RC release in all four of the Transformers flagship toy lines, could 2020 be the year of RC? Tell it to someone who cares. You probably didn't understand the situation. By the way, just a reminder that you only have a little over 48 hours left to lock in a Pulse pre-order for MP39 Plus spin-out before he spins away for good. We'll end our Masterpiece coverage with a little update on movie Masterpiece series MPM10 Starscream, who also got a new round of photography and listings on Japanese retailer sites this week. Although the news of MPM Starscream being sold as a Target exclusive in the USA was covered a few weeks ago, I did inform you that the Japanese release would be mass retail, which we got confirmation of this week. The figure is being sold for 20,000 yen, which is under God Neptune's Japanese price, and will be released this October. In case you aren't a psychopath and ignore things like packaging variants, it's time to teach you something. Every one of the Masterpiece movie releases has still had differing USA versus Japanese packaging, and MPM-10 is expected to follow suit. Typically, there is kanji on the front of the Japanese box not seen on the USA releases and a few Takara Tomy specific logos like their gold 35th anniversary seal. With the overseas MPM-10 not being a store exclusive, you can expect it to be omitting any reference to Target like the red only at Target stickers found on some of their exclusives. Most of you probably don't care, but for the small percentage of you that might, I just needed to make sure you will forever have my voice ringing in your head when you think you've completed that MPM toy line. You're welcome. The toy inside these packaging variants is expected to be exactly the same. 
So if you just want to get the figure at the lowest price, playing Target Roulette is probably your best bet. No listings are currently available for MPM10 on Target.com, but I'll keep my eyes peeled for you, that is, after I've ordered my own. The Japanese releases of both MPM10 Starscream and MP51RC currently have listings available on collector favorite Amazon Japan, but are currently not shipping to the USA! Oh shit, what are we gonna do now? Get us to Japan fast! This is bad news for those that have been taking advantage of their superior, almost wholesale pricing for the past few releases. Is this a COVID-19 related issue? Have the glory days of basically stealing these Japanese toys for a bala price come to an end? What about all my pre-orders already expected to ship in the coming months? Well, leave it to Mr. Starscream to navigate the precarious path through Amazon Japan customer service and make an inquiry on the fandom's behalf. And I received this promising response that I will paraphrase for brevity. The reason you can't purchase these has nothing to do with COVID-19. The listings for MP51 and MPM10 are not currently being shipped by Amazon Japan and are only shipped by marketplace sellers that do not ship to the USA. Any previously made order shipped by Amazon will still be shipped as planned. So basically, Amazon has not put their own hat in the pile to sell these just yet, and there is a chance that they will, and American-based buyers will be able to purchase them normally once that happens. Although, I sure hope that happens quick, because the pre-order window on these figures is coming up May 24th! So stay diligent and keep your fingers hovering over those buy buttons, because if they're going to be available from Amazon Japan, the window is going to be slim. One last tidbit of the Asian persuasion before we hop, skip, and jump back to North America. A new Chinese exclusive has appeared. The Transformers Neza crossover toy line has included a rather unique figure to its roster. Xiaomi is offering an exclusive building block toy of Cyberverse Optimus Prime. This is an official offering from Xiaomi and Hasbro Asia that uses bricks that seem awfully close to LEGO Technic bricks and makes an impressive 12 inch tall Optimus Prime that can be built into a great looking robot or not so great looking semi truck. The assembled figure does not convert so it must be built out of its included 1200 plus bricks in each singular mode, similar to how the Creo sets worked from back in the day. This figure is releasing at Xiaomi stores in China right now, and also has a listing on Chinese marketplace Taobao. But good luck navigating that digital minefield without sustaining permanent damage to your browser. This figure is not expected to get a release outside of China. Sorry. Let's take a break so we can shout out to one of our sponsors this week and prepare for the rest of this massive episode. We still got a ton of mainline Hasbro releases and some juicy rumors to take a bite out of after the break. Have you experienced Big Tin Robot toys and collectibles? If not, you need to know about their incredible selection of vintage and modern toys spanning all genres across five decades. Not just boys toys, but girls toys too. Big Tin Robot X models, they maintain fair pricing and fast but careful shipping services. Just between you and me, their secret weapon is one of the most knowledgeable toy minds in the business. New items are added daily to the inventory, so there's new stuff to see every time you visit the site. Speaking of the site, you can find it by going to bit.ly slash big tin robot. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash big tin robot, all one word. Big Tin Robot Toys and Collectibles, the robot workshop where our worker bots rebuild the joys of yesteryear, cleaning, sorting, and prepping used toys for sale. Bitly slash Big Tin Robot. TF Talk News. Before we head straight into the leaks and reveals from Hasbro USA this week, let's make a pit stop on the Mr. Starstream Express and check in on our UK pals running TF Nation. Like almost every other Transformers convention of 2020, TF Nation announced they had to cancel their event planned for the weekend of August 15th due to COVID-19 concerns. But fear not! The team at TF Nation just announced the big broadcast of 2020, which will be a virtual convention held online Saturday, August 15th. For those that had planned to attend, TF Nation is expecting to offer refunds and rollovers beginning tomorrow, Monday, May 18th, 
You can follow the event on Facebook at TF Nation for further details on their plans post-cancellation. In today's News of the Weird, we bring you an in-house brand crossover from Hasbro like we've never seen before. Bronies can sing hallelujah as their day has come in the form of the first physical Transformers and My Little Pony crossover named My Little Prime. A listing for this figure was found on Amazon UK, and now thanks to the My Little Pony community, we have seen the horror, I mean beauty, of it in the form of the official product photos from Hasbro. The retro-styled pony toy comes packaged in a window box featuring an illustration of the Optimus Prime decoed character. The figure sports a blue mane and red tail along with metallic silver paint and a semi-truck chest tampograph. I wasn't able to find any solid release information on this just yet, so stay tuned for that info. We all knew this day would come, and I must say, I kind of like it. Hasbro is crossing over various in-house brands like Ghostbusters and Power Rangers, so if you're a fan of all these brands, giddy up! So here's what you've really been waiting for, the Mr. Starscream report on the literal barrage of mainline Hasbro leaks, surprises, rumors, hopes, dreams, Dreams and nightmares nightmares that hit over the course of the last few days. We'll start with Earthrise, move into the Netflix War for Cybertron Walmart exclusives, and end with some serious heavy metal from Studio Series. In a rather strange method of being revealed, we got a glimpse at character art for Earthrise Bumblebee via a photograph of a large cutout promotional display. It's hard to tell where this photo came from. It seems like a large-scale trade show cutout, but it certainly shows Bumblebee buddy-copping with Earthrise Optimus Prime. While the fandom at large has managed to live a Bumblebee-free lifestyle for the past two years during War for Cybertron, we all knew it was only a matter of time before our little yellow minibot joined the rest of his plastic buddies. The image shows Bumblebee with a very G1-esque head and a body type that appears to be a redeco or remold of the Earthrise Cliffjumper toy. Eagle-eyed listeners will have realized long ago that a bug bite figure is expected as a generation selects, and that means Bumblebee couldn't have been far behind. If I had to guess where Bumblebee actually fits in the upcoming toy releases, I would say a good bet would be that he'll be part of the Wave 4 Deluxes that have yet to be revealed. If you were a fan of the deluxe cliff jumper figure, be sure to keep a spot open for Bumblebee on your Earthrise shelf. So just what else should we expect in this mysterious fourth wave of toys for Earthrise? If early leak lists are to be believed, which they probably shouldn't be, his wave mates could consist of deluxe tracks, needle nose, shrapnel, and runabout. Keep in mind this list of rumors from back in November of last year also said Skywarp would be a single Voyager release which was uh, flat out wrong. So nice try, Internet. I'm not buying. However, I am putting my chips on black and expecting Runabout to be the 2020 Walgreens Transformers exclusive and not a mainline release. Charlie, you ever play roulette? On occasion. Well, let me give you a word of advice. Always bet on black. In a more reliable form of reveal, it seems that Walmart is doubling down on the success of the War for Cybertron toy line and expanding their Netflix-exclusive redecos. A group of eight new deluxe listings were reported as existing in the Walmart inventory system last week. There are some real surprises in this list, and it may contain spoilers for the as-of-yet-released Netflix War for Cybertron TV show, so be warned! All eight of the following figures are deluxes and their UPC codes have been discovered as well, leading serious credence to these characters being legit. The list includes Wheeljack, Red Alert, Impactor, Bumblebee, Quintesson, Barricade, Deep Cover, and Elita One. If you re-watch the available trailer for the Netflix TV show, you'll see quite a few of these listed characters making brief cameo appearances, including Wheeljack, Bumblebee, Impactor, and Barricade. The following is pure speculation, but it's the best kind of speculation, mine. You can expect Wheeljack and Bumblebee to be simply dirtied up redecos of the Earthrise toys, much like Sideswipe, Hound, and Chromia from the first wave currently available at Walmarts. With Bumblebee being discovered as an Earthrise toy, like I said earlier, this is all but confirmed. 
Impactor will at least start out as a Decepticon, but if the toy matches his character model seen in the trailer, he will have the mainline Autobot version head sculpt, but sport a Decepticon insignia. Red Alert will likely just be a dirtied up version of his Siege toy, and I expect the same with Barricade since his character model in the trailer is also his Siege model. You never know if Hasbro might pull a fast one on us though and make the Netflix Barricade a redeco of the upcoming Earthrise Dotson mold. We can easily expect the Deluxe Quintesson to be a version of the Alicon since it's the only deluxe size Quintesson we currently know about. But hey, that just means more alligators for your zoo! The most exciting revelations here is the first USA release of the character Deep Cover, which historically is a black Diaclone version of Sideswipe and is always a welcome addition. But geez, that's three redecos of Sideswipe in one toy line. That's, that's a, a lot, lot of Lambos. Lambos. It certainly would throw a screwball in the mix if he was a black Sunstreaker redeco instead. Now wouldn't it? Hmm. That leaves us with our favorite underutilized robo-babe, Elita One, the vigilante freedom fighter from Cybertron and Optimus Prime's main squeeze. She is featured heavily in the Netflix trailer, and it's hard to tell if we should expect a redeco or remold of Siege Chromia or Earthrise RC, or something else entirely. All I can say is I wasn't expecting such a fleshed out character roster, and I am so in. There are likely to be more size classes coming in this line as well, but nothing has been found just yet. A notable omission for this toy line thus far is the lack of an Optimus Prime toy, so you know we've only scratched the surface. With eight new figures being found, it seemed to me like this would be a full case of single pack toys, consisting of a Wave 2, greatly expanding the Netflix Redeco toy line. But then came another major curveball. Hot on the heels of this first leak list came confirmation of yet a ninth deluxe figure discovered in Walmart's Vector Sigma database, Deluxe Cheetor! hey -o! Knowing that this is meant to exist as an all-encompassing toy line for the three individual chapters of War for Cybertron, I'm going to assume that this listing is our first hint at what the third and final chapter of War for Cybertron might be all about. So what do you think? Could this Cheetor really be as revealing as I am predicting? Could Beast Wars be a major imprint of the final chapter of the current mainline toys? Give me your feedback by emailing me at tftalknews at tftalk.net, and I'll read your message on the air next episode. Meow! And yes, I promised you some heavy metal. Yes, siree, and I always deliver. Anyone that was snoozing on the first couple figures that combined to complete Devastator has been involuntarily buying tickets on the express train to Bone City. With figures like Deluxe Scrap Metal costing over $50 and the hard-to-find long haul selling for three times its retail price in some instances. Well... As the hunt for all eight Studio Series Constructicons comes to a close with the imminent release of Leader Overload, everyone might be getting a second chance at nabbing the only Transformer with canon sex organs. Rumors of an alleged Studio Series gift set including all eight figures has finally been confirmed via a wholesale listing on NDA Toys in Europe. The gift set will be sold in cases of two and has an individual wholesale price of 234 euros, equaling about 300 US dollars. If you put a typical retail markup on that, the set is expected to clock in at around 400 bucks. At that price, the gift set is more expensive than finding the individual toys at retail, but perhaps there is more than meets the eye to this gift set. It would be a huge letdown if the gift set was simply a fancy repack of the original 8 Studio Series Constructicons, and with that price markup, I'd hope there's at least a more premium deco on them. But what would it be? Different characters like Demolisher and Payload? A sandy, messy desert deco? A pair of Wrecking Ball accessories? I can only hope that last one comes true. Let your imaginations run wild, but it might be too much to ask for a G1-inspired green and purple redeco, right? All we know about this release is it's going to be big, and it's going to be expensive. There isn't any release date information as of now other than coming soon. Maybe we will hear more at a Transformers-specific Fan Friday on Hasbro Pulse, but really, all these Fan Fridays have had something Transformers-related, so we are getting the lion's share of reveals. And that's a wrap. Wow, I don't think we've ever had such a jam-packed episode, and we didn't quite hit that 30-minute mark, but we got closer than ever before. Don't forget to drop me a line via email at tftalknews at tftalk.net and let me know if I missed anything important. 
WTFYLP will be live tomorrow, Monday night at 8.30 p.m. Central, so tune in and join the fun. I'm heading to the CR chamber to rest my circus for a while, and we'll be back at it again next Sunday. Oh, wait! We forgot to tell you about Dad! Oh, did we forget? The TF Talk Network exists due to the efforts of an enthusiastic collection of Transformers fans across North America and beyond. Check out our variety of shows like Microcasters, Ouch My Wallet, Cut the Tape, and our flagship show featuring a rotating all-star cast, TFYLP, which has been running for over 10 years. The cast at the TF Talk Network is always growing, so if you have a desire to participate, reach out to us via any of our social platforms at TFYLP. The TF Talk cast is on Discord. You can join us for free by typing bit.ly slash TF Talk Discord in the browser of your choice. Intro and outro score provided by Surrender. You can find Surrender at surrender-official.bandcamp.com. Directly support our shows and keep us on the air by becoming a monetary supporter of TFYLP on Patreon. Donations through Patreon are used to cover production and server expenses that keep our shows running and are not distributed to individual staff members. If you have any comments or feedback, you can directly email the show at tftalknews at tftalk.net, and we'd love to read some of your comments on the air. And if you've got a hot news tip, send it my way! 